Hello, hi, welcome back. In this section, we'll be discussing mitral valve and tricuspid valve anatomy. So, um, positioning the heart in the surgeon's view, as you can see here, we will be opening the left atrium, looking at the mitral valve. In uh, mitral and tricuspid valve, I uh, adopted the system in which we discuss the leaflets, annulus, subvalvular apparatus, whether papillary muscles and cords, and then annular relations. The same applies for aortic valve and pulmonary valve with a bit modification. Starting with the annulus and the leaflet, as you can see, there is a reciprocal um, relation between the leaflet and the annulus and mitral valve. So the annulus is third and the um, uh, anteriorly were as two-thirds posteriorly of the circumference so third of the circumference is anterior two-thirds is posterior whereas the surface area is the opposite two-thirds anteriorly and one-third uh, posterior that has a significance uh, in applied uh, anatomy why is that so the area being two-thirds in front that brings away the coaptation margin from the uh, jet area of the left ventricular outlet during systole, if the coaptation margin is closed anteriorly, it will be dragged in the jet, what we call the Venturi effect, and it will disrupt the coaptation margin. That's what we call systolic anterior motion. Also, the annulus is third to two-thirds uh, the circumference because anteriorly uh, there is more fibrous tissue which tucks tugs the, the, the annulus together, whereas anteriorly it is less fibrous tissue, hence it's a bit more lax. How is that significant? Um, um, as we explained earlier, so the um, uh, valve uh, prolapse is more common in the posterior leaflet than the anterior because it's well supported anteriorly by fibrous tissue. Um, there are several systems uh, describing the subdivisions of the leaflet. We need a system in order to be able to systemically uh, examine and uh, identify the, the leaflet uh, problem and hence repair it. So there are several systems, including Carpentier system, which is most commonly used, dividing into three, uh, six subdivisions, three posteriorly P1, P2, P3, and anteriorly A1, E2, E3. Um, uh, there is another system, the Duran or uh, the uh, Kumar et al. system, so uh, acknowledging two extra subdivisions, that is the commissural uh, ends, that is the zones of opposition uh, medially and lateral, uh, posterior medially and anterior lateral. Uh, next, we will be looking into the subvalvular apparatus. There is an important point here to understand. Historically speaking, three terms were synonymously used or interchangeably used. That is the prolapse, billowing, and uh, flail leaflet. Now, uh, this is with further investigations, further examination, and uh, advances in echo, this was understood to be not entirely accurate. So, if we consider this as the annular uh, plane, and this is the leaflet, there is a body, and there is a tip of leaflet. If the tip of the leaflet goes above the annular plane, this is referred to as prolapse. Yet, if the body of the leaflet goes above the plane, and naturally, of course, the tip will go, this is referred to as billowing. Normally, in all individuals, the body goes uh, slightly a bit above the plane, whereas the tip remains below, and this is normal, which was used to refer, uh, used to be referred back ago as the uh, prolapse or uh, normal prolapse or uh, uh, genital prolapse, where 17% or even more in some papers uh, uh, were suffering it, and it was more common in females, young females, and it was of non-significance. It's just an examination finding. Later on, with the advanced of 3D echocardiogram, we understood that this is overreported because basically the, the level is not straight as my hands looking here. It's actually a bit curvature and hence what we thought was uh, above the level was not actually above the level. Um, and now next is the, uh, uh, the flail leaflet, that is the tip of the leaflet is all the way up in the atrium, so it travels all the way up. So remember prolapse is the tip of the leaflet traveling upwards towards the atrium, the billowing is the body of the leaflet going upwards above the level of the annulus and flail is the tip going above. Why is that important in understanding the subvalvular apparatus? Because it explains the functions of the different cords. So we have three levels of cords, primary, 
which is attached to the free edge, hence referred to as the free edge cord. Then we have secondary, which are referred to as the strut cord, attaching to the body of the leaflet, and tertiary, that is the basal cord. The first and second types are meant to control the coaptation margin and keep it intact, hence they are directly in relation with the, uh, co um, uh, the competence of the valve. The tertiary has a different function, we'll discuss that now. So the primary leaflet, if there is subluxation of this cord, uh, the primary cord, sorry, if there is subluxation or even even rupture altogether, this will lead to prolapse and flail uh, leaflet. Yet the second or the strut cord, if it's subluxated or, or uh, ruptured altogether, this is um, which will lead to billowing. Hence, once you see the echo, you can understand now where is the problem and which cords do you need to implant if you're putting new cords and where should you implant the new cords, closer to the edge or towards the uh, center. Uh, the tertiary cord has a different uh, function. Now, every muscle needs a fixed attachment point in order to exhibit its function. This is the function of the tertiary cord. It allows the left ventricular muscle to uh, gain access or gain attachment to the fibrous and fixed skeleton of the heart, hence allowing it to grab, to create a tug, to create a, pr uh, a pulling force. This is crucial in the left ventricular function after mitral valve replacement or repair, hence all uh, uh, it's understood now and it's acknowledged how the preservation of the subvalvular apparatus and the leaflets during mitral valve replacement is essential to allow left ventricular function to improve postoperative. Looking at the subvalvular apparatus from the sagittal side, from the side, you can see there is an important here uh, uh, kind of pattern. As you can see, the papillary muscles are both attached to the free wall of the left ventricle. They are not attached to the septum. This is what in congenital heart surgery or the cardiac morphology, uh, morphologists refer to as septophobic uh, papillary muscle. This is important in identifying left and right side. It's one of the features which discriminates right and left side in congenitally malformed heart. Looking at an MRI, you can identify whether this is the left ventricle or ri a right ventricle by this. In the right side, the papillary muscles do get access or do get ac attachment to the septum. In the left side, they don't. Septophobic, it's referred to. What's more important here in the adult community is how the distance between the papillary muscles and the apex and the base of the heart is fixed. It's third to two thirds. Why is that important? First of all, it allows the distance for the starling forces, for the starling load to, uh, to exhibit itself. So you need a distance in order to be able to do a pull. You need a stretch. You need uh, a bit of distance since it's two-thirds away from the uh, 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 base of the heart. More important is this orientation explains why changes in the morphology of the left ventricle will lead to mitral valve regurgitation, which is in Carpentier uh, uh, classification acknowledged as the type 3B. It is limited or restricted uh, uh, closure. Because if the ventricular morphology changes, the position of the papillary muscle in relation to the base and the valve changes, and hence this uh, disrupts the occupation margin. It must be positioned third to two third of the left ventricle. Looking at it in a cross section, there is an important point here to deduct. As you can see, the anterior lateral papillary muscle is positioned in a very good position to receive blood from two systems, that is the LAD diagonals as well as the OMs. Yet on the other side, the posterior media receives only blood supply from the PDA, whether it's driven from the right or the left side. Whichever side is producing the PDA will supply the papillary muscle, so it's a single blood supply, yet on the anterior lateral, it's double blood supply. This explains why ischemic mitral uh, uh, affects more, uh, uh, ischemia affects more the anterior lateral rather than posterior medial in the setting of ischemi ischemic mitral regurgitation. So the posterior medial, um, uh, sorry, I put it the other way around. The posterior medial muscle is more prone to ischemia because it receives single blood supply rather than double blood supply in the anterior lateral side. Okay, now looking at the annular relations, remember the surgeon's view, how the left atrium is positioned in relation to the aortic root. I, would, I tried to postulate a system in which four structures are always in relation to any valve of the heart, of course, uh, apart from the pulmonary valve, but in all mitral tricuspid aortic valve, there are always four structures surrounding the valve. So the first structure, as you can see here, is the aortic root. You can understand now, looking at the surgeon's view, how the aortic root is in close relation. Remember, from the fibroskeleton, 
in which part of the aortic root is enlarged. Second is the bundle of his. Remember, it's not the AV node. The AV node embryologically originates in the sinus venosus in the right atrium and is positioned in the center of the uh, uh, triangle of cock. Then the bundle of his travels upwards to gain access to the membranous septum through the apex of the triangle of cock to reach to be able to pierce it and reach the ventricles hence at this point at this point where it uh, uh, travels upwards it comes to a close relation to the mitral valve traveling from the center of triangle of cock upwards towards the apex and that's when it comes in close proximity to the uh, mitral valve remember how in the fibroskeleton part we showed how the mitral valve is at a higher position than the tricuspid valve this is uh, why the bundle of his needs to travel upwards from the center to the apex of triangle of cock to gain access to the membranous septum and go down back again at, at, at the bundle of his. That's when it comes in close relation to the mitral valve at the posterior medial commissure. Coronary sinus sitting at the back of the heart, traversing both sides, right and left, hence it's in relation to both tricuspid and mitral valve. The right coronary artery coming at the side around uh, from the, uh, the, sorry, the circumflex artery coming around the side, hence in close relation to the mitral valve. It's important when you view an angiogram for a patient who is uh, uh, undergoing mitral valve surgery, monitor how, uh, closely how big is the circumflex valve. If it is big, you need to be extra cautious during putting stitches at this point in order to avoid picking up the circumflex uh, artery uh, with your deep stitches also be aware uh, at the relation between the mitral valve and the aortic root how you might with a deep stitch pick up the non coronary or the left uh, coronary cusp of the my uh, aortic valve and lead to aortic regurgitation the same can happen either side so if you're doing aortic valve you may induce a mitral valve regurgitation if you're not careful enough uh, in at these particular areas uh, next is the tricuspid valve. Again, starting with the surgeon's position, again using the same system, leaflets, annulus, subvalvular apparatus, papillary muscles, and the cords, and then annular relations. And remember, there are always four structures surrounding all uh, any valve. So starting with the leaflets, there are three leaflets in here, hence the name tricuspid. So septal leaflet, remember, it's the longest and then you have the anterior leaflet which is anterior lateral leaflet which is the biggest in terms of area and then you have the posterior inferior leaflet which is the smallest and sometimes even absent in uh, individuals uh, remember this is important uh, to explain why during bicuspidization if the surgeon is going to be sacrificing one of the leaflets it will be the posterior inferior because simply it is the smallest it's common sense cannot sacrifice the sub, uh, septal leaflet or the anterior lateral leaflet. So the posterior inferior leaflet is the point to be sacrificed in, in the situation of bicuspidization. So you bring back the annulus together and hence you sacrifice one of the leaflets. This is going to be the posterior inferior leaflet. Uh, next is the subvalvular apparatus. The same applies to the tricuspid valve. There are three levels of cords. The primary cord responsible for preventing prolapse and flail a leaflet. Then the secondary cord pr uh, responsible for preventing strut. Uh, uh, sorry, strut cord preventing uh, billowing and tertiary cord which has a function of uh, allowing the access of the left ventricle to a, a fixed point in order to be able to grab and create uh, uh, forcible contraction. Looking uh, in coronal section around the, uh, the uh, 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 position of the uh, papillary muscles, as you can see, the medial papillary muscle, which is the biggest, it uh, gets access from the posterior limb of the uh, uh, septomarginal trabeculation of the uh, infundibulum. It's also referred to as the medial papillary muscle of Lanchisi. It has the significance where the right bundle branch travels uh, in this area. Then you have the anterior lateral, which is the uh, gets attachment from the moderator band. Again, it's part of the infundibulum, one of the trabeculations of the infundibulum referred to as the uh, moderator band. Finally, the posterior inferior. You need to um, uh, carefully f uh, see here how the papillary muscle, the medial and the anterior lateral are in close relation to the conduction system. One is close to the right bundle, that is the medial one, and the anterior is close to the moderator band where the Parkinger fibers travel to the free wall of the right ventricle. The posterior inferior is not um, uh, of uh, high significance. It's sometimes uh, absent even in few individuals, and it is the smallest out of the three. 
looking in cross section as you can see here the anterior lateral the medial and the posterior inferior uh, you can see the sizes the biggest is the septal anterior lateral is second biggest the posterior inferior is even sometimes absent in uh, individuals and it is, it is the uh, smallest as you can see here how the papillary muscles could uh, get attachment from all the circumflex free wall as well as septal this is in pediatric or congenital cardiac surgery of importance reviewing an MRI you can identify right and left side so the left side is septophobic is meant to be septophobic the papillary muscle attachment the, le the right side are septophilic they do get attachment from the septum Next is the annular relations. As we said, four structures will surround all valves. So in here, the four structures, as you can see how the, uh, the aortic root, again, is in close relation to the uh, uh, right atrium and the tricuspid valve. So the first uh, relation is always the, uh, the aortic root. Uh, this is the commissure between the non-coronary and the right coronary cusp. Next is the uh, naturally the right coronary artery traveling in front of the heart and, and going back. Uh, again, it's in close relation to the anterior lateral and posterior inferior uh, leaflets. Then the AV node positioned at the center of the uh, triangle of Cochrane. Remember, embryologically, that is where it originates in the sinus venosus at one of the uh, uh, at the right atrium, and that's where it's located. And then the fourth is the remaining uh, boundaries as well as contents of triangle of Koch, the tendon of Tudaro, the coronary sinus, and the bundle of his traveling upwards to gain access through the membranous septum. These are the uh, basic uh, points in the anatomy of tricuspid and mitral valve. I will leave you here with this MCQ question uh, to test your knowledge and see you in the next chapter. Thank you very much.